Hello again, everybody, and welcome to The Warrior Report here on HPC TV 25. I'm Justin Barrientos. Thank you for joining us. We're brought to you by Cost Cutters of Winona. And we'll start out this episode talking volleyball with head coach Joe Getson. And big weekend uh, ending the regular season, leading to another big weekend this weekend mm -hmm. with the NSIC tournament. But kind of let's go backwards and go back to Friday and uh, St. Cloud State. Um, I guess a disappointing uh, game, but you tell me... Your thoughts well, on that. you know, anytime that you have, you put yourself in a position that you can win and you don't take advantage of that, it ends up being a little bit disappointing. But, you know, as we talked with the team, as long as we learn from it and we can move forward, um, you know, it wouldn't be a complete loss. And we were able to do that. All right. Uh, tell me what happened during the match because it, you won the first set and then things kind of steadily went a little bit downhill. You, well, you had leads uh, in other we sets. We did. We were competitive throughout. I just don't think that we carried our um, composure and confidence is the way that I'd put it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about any time doubt creeps in, it's uh, an advantage for the other team. And St. Cloud, being the team they are, took advantage of that a little bit. Um, and it wasn't like we weren't competitive. You know right. what I mean? I thought we put up good numbers. I thought we did really good things. But I don't think the girls... Um, celebrated that uh, and with the team at the level that we're playing it's just little things that separate winning and losing. All right and then that leads then to the next game which was uh, Minnesota Duluth at that time number five in mm -hmm. the country mm -hmm. and you come away with a win there. Uh, tell us well and I, I would even say a very convincing win yeah. uh, the way that we played the girls responded very well and you know that's what I'm looking for is growth and you know, we've had that throughout the season, and that's why we're so excited going into the playoffs as we continue to get better and learn. And we're a young team in positions. And so, you know, we really uh, took care of business. And, um, you know, I think at one point we talked about hitting zero. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Duluth hit negative 284. <laughs> so we, and it wasn't that they were bad. We did some amazing things to uh, make them feel that way. All right. What were some of the amazing things? Well, we had did? 15 blocks and three sets. Uh, you know, I thought our defense was really good. Um, we let them make errors. Um, some of them were really close errors hitting in and out, but having that confidence, uh, playing at home, knowing our court, and just going, oh, that's out. and might be out by an inch or two, but it was out. Mm -hmm. um, this is the first win, regular season win, over Minnesota Duluth since 1990. Did you know that going into the match? I, when we beat them in the NCAA, someone mentioned that was the first time since 1990 we had beaten them, but I don't keep track of those things. And, you know, um, they have a great program up there, and I think that speaks volumes to how good they are. And you know, I told the girls yesterday, I mean, when we do something like that, it's really special. I mean, uh, you know, yeah, we're supposed to because we are good too, but let's celebrate that. Let's really uh, let that sink in a little bit about what we're accomplishing here. And of course, that then led into your senior day celebration. Alexis Bass will join us in just a little bit as your lone senior. Tell us about that kind of emotion and, and uh, what you're going to miss from Alexis before we bring her on the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alexis from the start has always had such great positive energy. And, um, you know, it doesn't matter what situation she's in. She always looks at the, the glass half full. There's no doubt about it. And her leadership skills that she's brought on a daily basis has been amazing. And a lot of things behind the scenes that don't always show up in a stat line, but, you know, every day at practice. And, you know, when she has had her opportunity, she's taken advantage of them. Um, Saturday night or Saturday afternoon was another great you know, uh, example of that, where she came in and scored us a couple big points and put an exclamation point on the victory. Um, so... You know, having that in your gym is priceless, and we'll miss that. All right, so after the match then, you're kind of in limbo a little bit because you don't know where you're going to be in the tournament. I know that, you know, it was, you controlled your destiny, basically. You ended up with the sixth seed. Are you happy with the sixth seed? Well, we'd like to be the one seed, you Obviously. know. Uh, so, yeah, yes, but the way the draw comes out, um, just by chance, uh, on one side of the bracket are all the teams we've beaten. On the other side of the bracket are the teams that we've come up a little short against. So uh, we end up with Concordia. Mm -hmm. We like the matchup uh, on the floor. We split in the regular season, played them tough up there. One of those that we left a little bit on the table. Excuse me. So I think coming going forward, um, we like that. And then we'd play the winner of Duluth Augie. Um, so another good matchup for us. 
Um, but at this point in the year and, and in the season, you really just have to play your best. It's win or go home. So, you know, those teams of uh, Concordia obviously have done that year in and year out. So we're looking forward to a really good match um, and then being able to play, you know, someone again. Mm -hmm. And now I know you don't want to look too far ahead, but obviously the NCAAs are in, are in your rearview mirror or looking ahead <laughs> that, that you want to see. Do you think that you've built up a, enough of a resume that you might be able to make it in, or do you think you'll have to win out in the tournament? To we'll, we'll know a lot more on um, tomorrow, Wednesday, when they release the uh, third rankings in the uh, region. Um, hopefully we've moved up a spot or two. Um, you know, a, a lot of it is the... It's a little bit political in nature, and there's representation from all three conferences, and just how much uh, credibility and you know uh, they believe in the Northern Sun and the strength that it carries with them. So if they believe in that, uh, a win over Duluth might help our case a little bit. But you know, once again, I think we have to do some damage again in the conference tournament. All right, we got a couple minutes left in this segment. I want to backtrack, and something that I didn't uh, talk about is the number of games that you have to play in this in the NSIC tournament. So you play on Friday. If you win on Friday, you play on Saturday. If you win on Saturday, you play on Sunday. Do you do anything in practice now to kind of get ready for possibly three games in a row? No, um, probably not as much as you would think, just in the sense of you got to save the legs a little bit. At this time of the year, I think everyone's a little bit worn down. Um, we've tried to manage that and given a couple of days off here and there. Um, we've cut back on our intensity uh, duration. Um, we, we really go intense. We had a really good spirited competition last night, um, but it's a little bit shorter. So we'll back that off and we'll leave Wednesday after practice to head out there. And then we do get some time on the court on Thursday, but it's uh, you know under an hour of practice, um, really just getting uh, comfortable with the facility and the lines and the lighting and so forth. So. At that point, um, you know, we should be ready to go, and everyone's in the same boat, so we really don't have to do anything different, just win. I'm glad that you brought that up about the lines on the court, because there are a lot of people that, that talk about that for basketball. There are so <laughs> many lines on the court because they play so many different types of basketball and volleyball and all that sort of thing. Is that something that you kind of have to get acclimated to, to know where everything is on the floor? Well, I think so. I think it's just a comfort uh, level that you get. Um, you know, and obviously, like I said, against Duluth, that played to our advantage knowing where we were on our own home court and what that line means. I've got another foot to go or whatever that case may be. So I think just getting comfortable with that. Um, the, the dimensions of the court are the same, however... <laughs> Uh, you know, it might look different to you. I like that little Hoosiers moment there. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break here on Warrior Report. Perfect. 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 Getting the right look at the right price Perfect. is always in style at Cost Cutters. Located in the professional building in the Winona Mall, 507-454-6030. And welcome back to the Warrior Report here on HBC TV 25. We're brought to you by Cost Cutters of Winona. Alexis Bass returns. Thanks for being here yeah, again. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. All right, as we said, you were the lone senior on this team, so we'll, we'll start kind of at the end here. Saturday, you had uh, Senior Day. Tell us all about that, about the win, and then the celebration afterwards. Yeah, oh my goodness, what a day. Um, it was for sure really, really special. I mean, from celebrations to a sweep that we had. Um, and we we knew that was a priority going into um, Saturday, especially after Friday, um, and that we just wanted to come in and dominate. And so we did that. And I think every um, set we went ahead and we got better as a team and we, we built what we needed to do, especially that's huge momentum and confidence going into um, postseason. Um, and that way we can reach those goals. Um, and then I also knew just kind of going in, it was going to be an emotional day. Um, on Friday, I was so caught off guard in our, one of our timeouts. One of my teammates looked at me and said, oh my goodness, Red's here. And I was like, what? And I looked up in the stands and I lost it. Um, and Red and uh, our former assistant and Taylor, one of our former players and one of my really good friends um, came to watch and support us. And that was just so cool. Uh, and then on Saturday, my high school coach surprised me and 
uh, the previous day also when I best friend some home surprised me. So it's a lot of surprises and I'm not always good at being surprised <laughs> because I figure everything out. So it was really pulled off in a great way. And then um, at the end of our match, thank goodness, we hold the tears <laughs> for the end of the match, um, my sister had made a video and reached out to coach, um, which was really special because I knew that she was finishing up her conference games um, down in Nashville and that she couldn't be there, but once her face popped up on the screen, I lost it again. So it was really special just to be surrounded by um, so many friends and parents and supporters um, over the past four years. And um, something that was really special was getting in on that day and coming in, and I, right when I went in to serve, all the fans just went crazy, and I just, I had to break character, I couldn't help it. <laughs> like, crack a smile on my face. So um, just feeling that support and love um, like undying all the time was just really, really special. So something that I'll for sure remember always. All right. Well, you heard what coach had to say about kind of your legacy uh, with Warrior Volleyball, your kind of reaction to what you heard. Yeah. I mean, he knows, like we, we talk a lot about too, just off the court um, presence and the importance of that. Um, and I just really hope that um, that leaves an impact on the girls and that they continue to do that. Um, and it's really important to me, like just to make the most of every day um, and enjoy all of it because Realistically, it is going to come to an end super, super quick. Um, and looking back and and thinking, even when I see kids on campus go around for tours, I'm like, gosh, that was five years ago. <laughs> I feel so old. But um, it's just really important that you come in every day with a mindset that um, we get to do that. And that's something, mm -hmm. a mindset we've had this year to change that. Um, and knowing that volleyball is a gift that we get to play it and not everyone has the opportunity. Um, and so it's really special that we get to do it together as a team and with some of your closest friends. So um, making sure that I can impact and influence any way possible um, is what I've got to do to put our team in the best position possible, especially reaching our goals. Here we are in postseason and we're in the most perfect spot that we could be. So really excited about it. All right. So aside from Saturday, looking back on your Warrior career, your whole volleyball career, what are some of the things that you're going to remember most? Is it games? Is it practices? Is it off court with teammates? Uh, what do you think you'll remember? Yeah, I mean, I think you're gonna remember, you know, those moments you made the big plays or moments that you had, there were really special things, whether it's on the court or in practice, but I think the things that you're gonna remember most, and I remember hearing this a long time ago, was, you know, someone's gonna remember how you were as a teammate versus, yeah, those plays that you made, and so, um, I think I'll just take away a lot of the lessons that I learned and growth and just adversity um, because that's something that I think athletics inevitably teaches you mm -hmm. um, through injuries and through hard losses or um, even big wins and things that you need to change. So I think it'll for sure be the friendships that I've had and created and um, just all of the, the memories and lessons that I've learned and growth. Um, and I mean... And I think early on the season, Coach and I had a meeting and we were laughing about like, oh, you've, you've done a lot of growing. And I'm like, I sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I think just all of that. I mean, Winona has given me people and I think people make the place. And um, that's something that I'll take on with me forever. And volleyball has been a part of my life for, what, like 12 years. So that's going to be weird that that closes. But I had one of the track coaches, his wife plays in the league here and already was like, hey, you want to do a league? And I was like, oh yeah, but it's not over. <laughs> I may be retired for like, you know, officially, but <laughs> recreationally maybe not so much. So um, volleyball won't leave me and my family, of course, because Kaylee's still playing. Um, mm -hmm. But for sure, just all the lessons that I've learned. Um, it sounds so cheesy, but it's so true. All right. Well, thank you for joining us here. Uh, congratulations on a great career and uh, good luck this weekend. Thank you very much. Perfect. 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 Getting the right look at the right price. Perfect. Is always in style at Cost Cutters. Located in the professional building in the Winona Mall, 507-454-60. And welcome back to the Warrior Report here on HBC TV 25. We're brought to you by Cost Cutters of Winona. We'll focus on women's gymnastics. Becky Rolbecki joins us. Thanks for being here today. We're very happy to be here. Let's uh, start since it's been a while since uh, we've talked gymnastics uh, on the program. Let's start with the wrap of last year. 
Uh, tell us a little bit about how things went last year. Um, I know that you had a, um, an all con or an all American, excuse me, uh, last year. So uh, tell us how, how things went last year. Last year was a growing year for us because the class before was huge. Um, we had the powerhouse you know, with Ebony Jackson, mm -hmm. the national all around champ. Um, she was in the class that graduated. So the last year's team had to find their own footing and find their own identity. And it took us a while, but by the end of the year, they really figured out that they were a very capable and quality team. And we were scoring really, really well at the end and had really found our, our groove. So that group of kids is basically all back and intact for us, minus a few. So we don't have to have that mm -hmm. this year. We have a good foundation of believers and they know that they are capable and they can compete with everybody. And you were kind of adapting to a sort of new home, I guess, because they, they kind of walled off that one part, and, and so you kind of had a space all to yourself for the first time maybe ever. Uh, tell me a little bit about that and, and, and what it's like to, to kind of have that space now. Moving into that gym has been the best thing for our program. It is such a godsend. We are so happy to be on campus. The kids feel like they're part of the, the whole athletic program. The connectivity that we can have now with other athletes is very good. Um, the environment itself in the gym is fresh, it's clean, it's everything that we need as far as equipment and space. So we are super grateful to Dr. Olson for getting that space for us and for the support of our administration as well with Eric Show. It, it is a wonderful place to be in and the kids are, are feeling better about themselves and the program because of it. And for recruiting purpose, it, purposes, it's win-win. Mm -hmm. um, the kids walk in and they see this great, beautiful, be you know, nice gym and they're like, I want to go there. You have a great space. So, I mean, all, all together it has made all of us feel more inclusive and more important and more engaged in all of the athletics at Winona State. All right. Let's talk a little bit about the gymnastics program in general because I, I did a little research just to you know, refresh my memory on what gymnastics was. There are only four NCAA gymnastics programs in Minnesota. University of Minnesota, Hamlin, Gustavus Adolphus, and Winona State. Right. And because of that, you have to compete in the WIAC. So tell us a little bit about, about that. Well, we did Division II for many, many years, and I was in the time when we did the transition mm -hmm. to the WIAC and Division III. Um, and I found that competitively, there's no difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, the D3 programs are just as strong as the D2 in, uh, institutions that we went against. Um, the nice part about being a part of the conference with schools that are more local is we feel like we have involvement and engagement and a sense of identity with each of the teams. So we get to know one another, we get to know the coaches, and we have a sense of belonging. So I think in all, we're, we're still competing at the level that we did when we were D2, but we are, are able to have some camaraderie with the other teams. And so I think that's very good for us. Okay. Walk us through a, a typical year in gymnastics. So you're, you're about ready to, to get ready with uh, the season for this year. What do you do kind of in the off season? How much contact can you have with the gymnasts? Uh, what do they do on their own? The gymnasts are responsible in the off season to take care of their own conditioning and skill development. We have a 19 week rule with division three. So we can allot whatever 19 weeks from counting back from regionals that we can use for training time. So the kids are at school for a month usually, and then I get to start coaching them usually at the beginning of October. And then we go till Christmas break. Um, then they have two weeks off, and then we come back, and then we kick off the start of our official season. But fortunately, we have an inter-squad that we do with lacrosse every year, and that allows the kids to have a more finite point where they're not waiting 20-some weeks before we're competing. So it, it makes it much more exciting and much more easy for me to push and ask more of the kids because... December 6th, we're going to have our inner squad, and mm -hmm. they've got to be ready. So it, it is really a fun place to just get out there, see what we have. It doesn't cost us anything. You know, we can see how our freshmen, freshmen respond to competition, and everybody else gets to prove themselves mm -hmm. or decide, hey, I need to challenge myself more. So that's one of our favorite meets because it's our land of discovery. Who are we this year, and what, what are we going to do with it? All right, and that's at UW Lacrosse, is that correct? It'll be here. Oh, this it's year. here. Yep. It's here this mm -hmm. year. Okay, very so good. So we rotate every year. Okay, and that's December sixth, mm -hmm. uh, so people can check that out. All right, so let's talk about this year's team, and then what people can maybe see on December sixth. As you said, you kind of bring almost everybody back. I think you have four or five freshmen this year, and you had four that are, were on the team last year that are not on the team this year. Um, kind of give us an overview of what you have this year. We're a much better balanced team than we usually are. Um, for the first time ever, we are top heavy on the senior side. Mm -hmm. 
which is phenomenal. There are seven seniors that will be graduating um, who are an integral part of what we're doing with the program. But to have that leadership and that knowledge and this is how it works and being able to reach out to the freshmen is really a nice thing to have. So we're, we're nicely balanced. We have six new freshmen coming in. Two of them are all-arounders, which is unique. Mm. It's, it's a hard role to play that you're capable in all four events to compete at the, at the upper level. So, and in, in the middle, we have hungry sophomores and juniors that are eager to take a spot as well. But this year is going to be a fabulous year for us because we, we are so deep in each event. We've never had this luxury. We're always short on boulder bars or, you know, floor last year. We're like, get out there if you can do anything kind of thing. Um, this year, we can go like almost 10 to 12 deep in each event. Um, so we've had kids in and out with different injuries, and we're still putting up on our show days, which we do privately on Friday. Um, we're still putting up nine and ten quality routines, and I look at the squad and I'm like, every one of you can compete at the top level. So it's going to be really hard for me come competition season to pick who should be in that day. I can put six kids up on each event and then two exhibition. Okay. But so there's 32 spots, and we have kids that can fill those spots, and I won't know which one to pick. I mean, basically, it's just going to be who can be more consistent, who's showing more drive and determination that week. So I expect our lineup to be very fluid this year. Um, the upperclassmen aren't guaranteed their spots, except a few that are very solid because the freshmen are challenging. They're, they're hungry. They want a spot. The, the middle sophomores and juniors are, hey, I added this and this. No, I should be more prepared. So they're really pushing each other to excel. So we're going to do some really fun things this year because everybody knows that, hey, this is a group of kids that can take us somewhere. And, and we just can't wait to see what's going to happen because we are going to be good. And how many home meets do you have for people to, to come and watch? Uh, after the inner squad, we have three. Okay. So it's pretty limited. Um, we only see the conference schools and then trade off with them. And then we do one um, travel meet every other year. So we're going down to Centenary in Louisiana this year for our travel trip. We're excited about that. It's a, it's a nice fun trip for the kids to take. Um, builds a lot of team camaraderie as we travel together and do that. And, and we like going outside of this region because the scoring is better. Uh, the Midwest scoring is a little tough. Um, they tend to be much more picky about things. So if you get outside of this, it tends to bring a better score for the same equal performance. So it'll be a fun trip for us. All right, we have less than a minute left to go. And I, I have to mention this because at the end of next season, the national championships are going to be hosted by Winona State. How exciting is that for the program? That's a fabulous opportunity for us. And we've wanted to do it for several years. And the stars never aligned right with the right people, with the right administration, with the right you know group of kids. Um, but we are very, very excited to have it. It's an exciting event. We bring all the powerhouses from the D3 schools from out in east and west, and they come together. And the level of competition and the energy at the national championship is amazing. It is, it is such a fun event. So it will really be fun to bring that to Winona and have the peoples that are, are here interested in gymnastics see what it's all about and see what that D3 gymnastics is just as equal and challenging as the D2 people. And we even compete with D1 people, and we can mm -hmm. hold our own in, in most regards. So we're, we're quality. We're a good team, and we compete with the best. So, And then you bring all those powerhouses together. It's, it's just, it is a fun atmosphere. So I'm hoping that the community will come out and, and check it out because it's probably a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I mean, you don't, you don't get national bid very often. Yeah, so, good. yeah, we're excited about that. All right, we're going to take a break here on Warrior Report. When we come back, Hannah Norman will join us right after this. Perfect. 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 Getting the right look at the right price. Perfect is always in style at Cost Cutters. Located in the professional building in the Winona Mall, 507-454-6030. And welcome back to the Warrior Report. We're brought to you by Cost Cutters of Winona. Hannah Norman is here. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Now, you're a senior on the uh, Warrior team, but you kind of battled back last season from injury. Uh, tell us a little bit about what the injury was that you had and what the recovery process was. Um, so I've torn my ACL multiple times. Two of them were in high school. So getting a spot on Winona's team was pretty huge for me. And then experiencing it again it was really unexpected and it was really random. But so I tore my ACL and then a couple other ligaments in there. And so 
I know how to do it, I've done it before, but having the athletic training program and the support of a coach and a full team behind your back compared to the other two times was amazing and it made it so that I was 100% in for committing to the team and coming back for it for last season and this season, and which was the best decision I've ever done because a lot of people question you saying, are you really gonna keep doing that to yourself? Like, so just coming back with the support of Winona and Becky and my whole team and our training program, it was honestly the best experience ever because it's the, one of the hardest recoveries. It's not fun and I don't wish it on anyone, but it makes you so much stronger and you realize how much support and love you have here. So how much work goes into that? I mean, what, what are some of the things that you have to do in order to heal that injury and, and to get ready for competition again? Um, well, you have the major knee surgery and then you wake up and you can't even move your own leg anymore. And then I was restricted on crutches for six weeks and then I couldn't use any hamstrings or muscles until 10 weeks. So my leg became like the size of my arm and it's like really defeating seeing that. But I went to the training room every single day and I did an hour to two hours of therapy with my trainer and I would go into the lifting with the girls every day and even though I can't do everything that they do, I would get on the leg press machine and I would burn the sucker out <laughs> and then I'd go to practice every single day and I'd cheer everyone on as loud as I can, stay involved, which honestly, sophomore year when I tore my ACL was one of my favorite memories of college because I was so in tune with the team and working so hard every single day and then slowly after four months you can finally try to run and then you can at like five months I got to do a handstand again and it's just you realize how much you miss going upside down because I've done it my <laughs> whole life so that was it's honestly a fun recovery it's really challenging because you're you lose all your muscle and things don't work like they used to but the challenge is honestly kind of fun like so last year you were able to compete in two meets on bars. What was it like to be back in competition again, back out with your teammates, and did you kind of have the same kind of butterflies you had the, like the first time that you participated in gymnastics? So I actually competed the whole season in exhibition because Becky believed in me, and I did not expect that at all. Like I didn't even have my parents fly with me because I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, this season I'm just gonna try really, really hard. Maybe I can get an exhibition meet at the last meet of the season. <laughs> that was my goal, but I was in exhibition in the first meet against lacrosse, our inner squad in December. I remember going home and telling my parents like, oh my gosh, I'm competing. And they're like, no, you're not. I didn't, don't even know you're going upside down yet. I'm like, yeah, I am. <laughs> and so I did exhibition most meets and then she put me in the real lineup for when someone was like, tired and needed a break that week or I, I was more consistent in the gym because I do an easier dismount to take it easy on my knee. But I used to struggle a lot with competing. I put in so much work during the week and work really hard and then at a meet my nerves hit me and it took a lot of practice yeah. to figure out how to figure, like get that. So her putting me in all last year made it so the last three meets of the season I nailed every single time and going into this season makes me so much more excited because I finally, it's finally clicked. Like I know how to make it happen. So I'm really excited. Oh, that's awesome. Well, definitely good luck this year. We have one more minute left to go. I want to mention something you said your parents have to fly to see you because you're from Oregon. How mm -hmm. did you uh, find out about Winona State and had you ever heard of the school before? Okay, so I decided to do college gymnastics. My, I wanted to do my whole life. And then after my two ACL tears, it was like out of the question. And then senior year of high school, I was like, you know, I will never forgive myself if I don't try. So I reached out, well, before my ACLs, I was really looked at by a lot of D1 schools. So that was hard knowing that that was never an option for me anymore. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to all the D2 schools I could find, which are very few for gymnastics, because I was like, oh, I don't even know about what D3 <laughs> is. I don't even know that exists for gymnastics. <laughs> so Winona popped up as D2. There's only Seattle Pacific on the West Coast. And so I was like, that's the second closest one. Mm -hmm. So I filled out a recruiting form and she contacted me like the next day. And it was, I reached out to so many schools and got so many like, sorry, our roster's full. Like this is, I have one more year, like couple months of senior year. And she was like, I saved one spot in the dorms and for a bar specialist and I want you. And it was like the best feeling in the world. And then I had no doubt that that spot was made for me. Like, these ACLs are meant to happen, everything is meant to happen. And I even have 
relatives that live in Minnesota that I'd never met before. Mm. So just, I felt like it was a godsend. Like I was supposed to come here and I've been here for four years and it's been the best thing I could have ever done for myself. All right, well, that's great to hear. Thank you for joining us here today and a good luck this season. Thank you. Thank you very right. much. Thank you for watching Warrior Report. We'll see you next time here on HBC TV 25.